Time to strike your best pose, bring all your memes, cause we're talking JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 1 Phantom Blood. Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode, another review here at A Week in Geekdom. Geo here, and today I finally bring you the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 1 anime review that you guys voted on. Uh, here I have the first Blu-ray set, the limited edition, which comes with all sorts of goodies uh, that sadly we don't get anymore, uh, you know, compared to the new releases, but here is the actual Blu-ray for part one and part two, but we're just going to focus on the first eight episodes of part one, uh, which are pretty interesting. There's a lot of heated debate as to which series, or which season, I should say, is the best one. The anime is, of course, done by David Production, and it debuted back in 2012, if I remember correctly. And it's a multi-generational story featuring characters related to the Joestar family. And our main character in this adventure is Jonathan Joestar, which got a lot of flack online from the community because uh, some consider him to be the blandest or most boring of the uh, Jojo characters, I happen to disagree. I think Jonathan is actually one of my favorite characters in the whole franchise uh, simply because of his purity and such an honest character. He reminds me of your Clark Kent's, if you will. He's honest and just an overall nice guy who just happens to be extremely overpowered. I have to admit, I got into the franchise really late. I think like, what, like a year and a half ago or something like that. And I just kept seeing the memes. And I remember a long time ago, I was, I think, at a Walmart or something, and I first saw the release of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure from uh, uh, this set, but on DVD. And I don't know, I, th I thought it looked interesting, but I didn't make too much uh, a noise about it. But online, people just kept talking about it. Obviously, there's a gap. When a show gets adapted, you have a bunch of new fans that are coming in for the first time and are hyping up the series. And of course, you have your longtime manga readers that like to scuff at anime noobs because that's just the cycle of things, I guess. But they like to make fun of that fact. And I was somewhere in the middle because I had no idea, but I kept hearing about this series and I had some friends recommend it to me, but I never gave it a shot. And then a year and a half ago, <laughs> a lot of memes started showing up. And by that, I mean a lot of memes. Like, holy crap, guys, calm down with the memes. At first, they're funny, and some stay really funny uh, to this day, but it's just an onslaught of memes with JoJo and references and videos uh, seemingly trying to grab something out of thin air and make it a reference to this manga and anime series. I mean, <laughs> okay, wow. So after so many memes, I decided, all right, well, I might as well just jump into it, right? I watched like the first three or four episodes and it was it was fun. I like the idea of, uh, you know, Jonathan being the protagonist in the 1800s, it being a period piece with supernatural action and like, you know, battle shown in mechanics, which will later evolve as, as the series progresses. But at the start with um, pseudo martial arts and boxing and just European focused training when it came to battles. And then all of a sudden as the series progresses and you get elements like Hamon and uh, all the uh, chi energy mystical things, it becomes grander than life. And there's a certain cheesiness but in a good way to the whole series which has it just makes it really endearing and really memorable obviously the characters are larger than life the color palettes are all over the place and they're wonderfully rendered and done by david production this is one of their uh flagship title adaptations and there's a lot of love and care that went into making this as fun as 
and as close as possible to the manga and presents us a really cool story. Uh, like I said earlier, a multi-generational story with JoJo's, basically uh, Jonathan Joestar, hence the JoJo. And it is in the 18th century. The character survives uh, from uh, as a baby an accident where the Joestar family was, I guess, taking a ride and the carriage fell across a ravine or a cliff and, and the character of Dario Brando of the Brando family sees an opportunity to steal from rich people, but uh, Jonathan's father is too honorable and uh, he doesn't see it that way. He sees Dario saving him, so he's forever thankful and, and gives him uh, uh, the family ring and all that stuff. And he tells him, whatever you need, uh, I owe you my life, uh, you saved saved my life and my child unfortunately his wife passed away but he's thankful for uh, uh, being saved but the truth of the matter is Dario is just a scumbag and he just wanted to steal everything right so we flash forward a little bit and we get introduced to certain new elements we see Jonathan as a young kid and Dario has a son which will become one of the franchises flagship characters and just one of the craziest most wonderful villains that you could ever uh, hope to write in your story of course Dio Brando. Dio's a little screwy in the head and will do anything to achieve his goals and when Dario passes away uh, Dario reveals to Dio of the favor that uh, they're owed from the Joestar family so Dio goes to live with them. And that sort of kicks off the main adventure for at least a good portion of the franchise's history. The relationship between Dio and Jonathan and how they're butting heads. Obviously, they don't know the origin or the true nature of the Brando family and Dio's ambition and and, and and him wanting to rise to power and be the wealthiest and strongest and, and the top dog of uh, European society at the time and it's all carefully orchestrated to make Jonathan out to be the bad guy so his father will reprimand him and Dio will excel as the head of the uh, Joestar family right? So I don't necessarily want to spoil everything that happens in the series, but as the story progresses, there are some uh, heinous acts committed, some very memorable memes that to this day are still thrown around in the uh, weeb anime community. And what essentially it boils down to, although the anime doesn't show it right away, there is the mask element from uh, ancient times that basically this stone mask turns people into because it wants blood and it turns people into living vampires and or ghoulish fiends and all that stuff so after realizing this and a couple fights and hijinks later and um, putting several characters in harm's way Dio acquires the mask and becomes this eternal vampire so begins the story about the Joestar family against this rising evil. Obviously later on in the series uh, we get an explanation for the origin of the mask and the powers and all that stuff and we have the uh, really badass fights and the ultra machismo character designs uh, that Araki obviously was inspired by uh, the 80s culture of Stallone and Schwarzenegger movies and the machismo era, if you will. The series would later tone that down in favor of more stylized, uh, stylish, fashionable, metrosexual character designs that well define the series to this day. But at the start, it's, it, I, I like that contrast of, you know, the rise in popularity of certain things. Pop culture obviously dictates how your characters are going to look in a uh, story, in a fictional story. And later on, as the characters realize that Dio is this unstoppable force, uh, there has to be sort of this Deus Ex type solution to the whole thing, and we get introduced to Hamon, which is the basis for a lot of the fighting that will uh, ensue in the series, and sort of this mystical chi-like energy, and 
and all these crazy kooky elements, but the series progresses in a nice way where you don't mind this escalation of power because it was never supposed to be a drama. It was supposed to be this action-packed, fun series, this bizarre adventure of ghouls, phantoms, vampires, superpowers, and later on with the stands and all that stuff, right? So I like how it takes an unusual approach to the battle mechanics of other manga and anime, because you gotta remember this started out as a Shonen Jump title, right? Later on, it moved on to its own thing, but it still has that youthfulness and seeing all the characters try out different uh, battle moves and using different strategies. It's all in there. It's all fun. It's all tongue-in-cheek, but in the best way possible. Obviously, the, the fantastic art and production design from David Production with uh, a really interesting color palette. I love how it switches between multiple tones in a, scene, in a scene to highlight not only the action, but the gothic element, because it is based on in Europe, and it does have that feel. It kind of reminded me of an anime uh, crazy ghosts and goblins mixed with uh, Castlevania, obviously with um, the quirky elements that JoJo's known for. At eight episodes, I think it is a wonderful introduction. Now, the problem with this series is that a lot of people find that the first eight are very safe and uh, Jonathan is a boring protagonist and the story is a little bit rough and sluggish and it doesn't really represent what's so great about the series. I liked it nonetheless because it reminded me of that gothic fanfare and, and all the NES games that I mentioned and that aesthetic and it being a period piece in the 1800s, I really enjoyed that stuff. It's, um, yeah, it's a little bit tropey and uh, you can see some of the things that are happening from a mile away and the characters behave in predictable manners. Obviously, Jonathan is very stereotypical and he might be a big of a Boy Scout, similar to a character like Superman. But I like that. I like his honesty, his resolve, and his good-natured spirit, and in the face of adversity, not giving up. In the face of this ultimate evil that arises in the wonderfully delicious villain known as Dio, I like his resolve to avenge uh, the fallen characters of the series. Don't want to spoil it just in case. But there is some death involved. And I do like that when it comes to the series, sometimes nothing's off limit and people will die and you're shocked, but you just gotta keep going because, again, the series spans multiple years, right? Um, it, it keeps going afterwards in different eras. So I like that about uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. The action's intense, the colors I liked, and the wonderful characters I, I really enjoyed. Do I recommend it as a starting point? Yes, of course, it is a starting point. Just know that the series evolves and it gets better, and it gets much more complex with themes and character development. Just so happens that at the start it's a little bit stereotypical with some of its uh, character representation, but it gets really good. Obviously, Araki's love for human anatomy and physiology and the way he poses the characters are just emblematic and really do make the series. And just to show you uh, the little art cards here, because I think they do a good job of giving you a feel for the characters, you do see his, um, his display of anatomy and showing how all these characters uh, look. There we go. If that thing can focus. Right. <laughs> so as you can see, just super stylistic character designs and the man has impeccable taste and all his characters are, uh, you know what you're getting yourself into when you see his character designs. They're all appropriate for the era, but they still have a very high fashion sense for each. And at eight episodes, the first part I think is a really quick, fun, action-packed uh, experience that you'll probably dig if you've never watched. So that is my spoiler-free review. I don't really like doing spoilers on this channel, but it's been a ton of fun, and I, I wholeheartedly enjoy this series with its great soundtrack and music and the characters and all the stuff that I just mentioned. It's a blast. So 
Yeah, I do, I do, I do recommend it. A lot of people will say, "Oh, start with part three. Yeah, start with part one. Do it as intended, right?" <laughs> so, what about you guys? Obviously, I know you've seen JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and you like that series. Let me know what you thought of Phantom Blood. And if you want me to continue reviewing the series, of course, let me know as well. I'd be happy to do that. And thank you for everybody that voted on this uh, title to be reviewed. I had a lot of fun revisiting part one and watching all that stuff. And uh, yeah, made me nostalgic for that era, <laughs> if you will. So thank you everybody for tuning in. I have a new poll on my community tab, of course, with new anime that... Uh, hopefully you guys can vote on for me to review. Pretty excited about that as well. So yeah, thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of A Week in Geekdom. I truly appreciate it. And if you want to subscribe, please consider doing so. I do content like this where I go over anime, comics, manga, all that fun stuff. I've got to go, guys. I will catch all of you on our next video.